Good evening. This is Newsnight from Brian Richardson. Time now is 25 to 9. I'm only joking. Anyway, I would like to say thank you again for all the people that have got back to me with their messages when I put out, you know, we're looking at doing a, a few uh, little talk events and the amount of people that got back. And I promise you, with all my heart, I hope to go and see everyone. No matter where you are, I will do my best to come and see you or somewhere near you. All right, and that won't let you down. Have a nice chat. I'll answer any question. I'll be honest with you. We'll have a pint. I don't drink, so I have a shandy to be sociable. And I shake a few hands. If you get a few people there that want to call me, I'm not bothered. I'm not. I just want to be the voice of the truth. That's all I want to be. And the main person that voice I want to be is my brother. Okay? Not so much the other two, because I, like I said, I never met Pat. So I'm not going to lie. I don't come on here beef myself up as I was one of the fucking tough nut of them. You know what I mean? Or I was always fighting. I won't. I was just the person that got my brother going, got involved with the bankers' drafts. And after that, I was a nobody to him. Simple as that. Anyway. I watched that uh, podcast. I watched. I think quite a few probably watched it. Terry Stone and Yummy B. Now I'll tell you something. Yummy B does not hold back when he wants to say something, does he? he he's had a hard life from start. Uh, he's done some fucking time and met some, some big people in his time. But I couldn't stop laughing. Because when he slaughtered Bernard, and what he's saying is true. He is saying, you know, he's coming out black and white. It's true. I think Terry was a little bit upset over it because Terry Stone is friends with everyone. You know, you come, you go on his show and he takes you as it is. He don't call you, he takes it as So sometimes when someone comes on and they're putting someone down from his show, he must be after the lad. You know, you take people at face value. But what he said about Bernard is true. You know what I mean? It really is true. So I'm going to tell you a few stories. I'm hoping they're good. They might not be much of fucking shit. But I'm going to tell you a few stories. The main one is Rackhills. The days of Rackhills, 92, 93, 94. To me, a part of 95. I wasn't there all the time, which I've never said I was. And I ain't going to say I was. So in Basildon, I can remember four nightclubs. We had Rackhills which was the best one. We had Time, uh, up the top of the escalators. No, Time was across the road, sorry. Near, opposite side of Rackles, across the road near, I think it was Co-op Funeral Parlour, I think it was there. I don't know if it used to be an old bowling alley, I'm not sure. We had Time Nightclub anyway. Then we had a nightclub at the top of the escalators, I can't remember what that was called. And we had another nightclub uh, on the industrial side. It was above some shops near... Not far from Four Tractor Plant, not far, from, not far from Yardley's factory, and it was around the corner from a big yogurt factory, if I remember rightly. Now, they're the four clubs, as well as the railway and the old pubs you used to go to. Have, you used to have, uh, I know the railway used to have a nightclub, it used to be there. Mick McKay used to run the door there. Fucking lovely bloke. Probably the hardest man in Basildon. And I'll tell you something, I can say one thing about him, he was not a bully. Or his daughter, and his daughter was a... She could handle herself in her days. Anyway, we're going to go back to Rackhills. So why did Rackhills get a bad name? Right, so we were dealing pills in Time nightclub. We were, I was dealing pills in King's Club, and I was dealing pills in Rackhills. Okay. In King's Club, I got caught. Because King's Club, not a very big place like Time's nightclub. This discotheque nightclub, I call it. It was not a very big place. Got busy in King Club. I got caught by a doorman called Smut. Now, Smut gave me a smack around the ear, all quite hard. Took wide off me and fucked me off. That's fair enough. You're barred, Brian. We never see ITI anyway. So Craig put someone else in there a couple of weeks later. Because on Canvey Island, if I remember right, there was three nightclubs on there. But we only had the Kings. We didn't have the other two on the seafront, if I remember rightly. Well, Craig put someone else in there, and after a few months, he got caught, and he got a slap quite bad for it, because a bit of a cheeky lad. And that's when Craig and Tony went down to King's Club, had the fight, and Craig bit half a dorm and zero off. 
So you know that story and that's that. So, so I was dealing in Raquel's and I was dealing in Times Nightclub. Now, I never carried the pills. Like you say, he's a coward. I don't know. That's the way it works. I never carried them. I didn't want to get caught with fucking bulk of pills in me a long time in sevens. You and me. So I went with someone that would carry them. They got their own thing. If someone said, Brian, I'll have a couple of pills, mate. Bosh, I'll get the pills that are done. That's how it worked with me. Where Mark Murray always carried his pills on him. See, we know Mark Murray was dealing in Raquel's, and so was I. But Raquel's was, was a fairly big place. He, he had all quite a number of people. You know what I mean? As you went up the stairs, you got to the, 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 the dance floors in front of you. There was a bar to your right, a couple of stairs up, a bit of a landing, another bar, and you got to the, the top bar. So we were all at the top bar. So I was dealing there. Mark was dealing there. Now, I've already said this about Mark. Me and Bernard put Mark in it on dispatches first off. And I put my hands up. I did. I did say he was dealing. I didn't say he give the drugs to the lad that give to the young girl. I didn't say that. I just said I was dealing in Raquel's and Mark was. Okay. Bernard said other things. That so-called Mark Murray's friend. Bernard. We know he is because, he, you know, Mark. Bernard always says he has photos of him sitting around his flat with him. He has photos of giving the covers in the nightclub. So that's Bernard's business. So Bernard comes to Raquel's. And Raquel's got a bad name. So why did Raquel's get a bad name? And a lot of people that come from Essex will back this up. So if you went to Time Nightclub and you had a row, now fights used to happen, didn't they? You used to have a few too many beers and you could smoke on the dance floor and drink on the dance floor as such then if you didn't get caught drinking but you used to so if you bumped into someone and had a few more beers it won't i'm sorry they wanted to fight you so that's the thing i fight or you both fancied the same young lady it, you, you, you fought over it so in time my club the dawn would get you a pair of you get you around the ear and chuck one out if, the, if he was the hardest one, he'd chuck you out. The one that wore a face to sit, sit at reception on, on a, uh, like a little set -y thing until that one fucked off because he didn't want to fight on that side. Or he'd put you in a taxi and send you out. That's the way to do it. The one of the top escalators, they done the same. If you were fighting, they grabbed you by the collar, by the ear, took you out, said you're barred. Put you on here, you're barred for a week, two weeks. You know what I mean? The one in, on the industrial side, the same. There used to be a little club, I remember right, on the roundabout, the big roundabout, it used to be like a community centre club, disco thing over there where most of the skillets went. But yeah, you're, you're just bad. But Rackles was different. If you had a fight in Rackles, you weren't just slung out. The so-called rocker fucking hard doorman, certain of them, used to give you a good hiding, chuck you down the stairs. So you, you come out, what you got more of a good hiding for fighting than you did fighting because the doorman there most doorman at Rackles were bullies okay I don't care what they say they were bullies they did just chuck you out the door and say you're barred for a week come back in a week's time they chuck you down the fire exit that's our hard day look and most of the people they slung out were, were kids probably did a fucking first fight never fight in their life you hear me but they, that's how it was but they used to come back see you had Landon, Pitsy and Bazinan, you hear me, they were the main areas. And you had rival gangs, you had rival gangs at school. So you did have the arguments, but the doorman calls you. So if one of the lads come back, you give a, a, a lad a good hiding down the stairs and he come out quite bad, and he come back with a few of his mates, or he come back with his brothers or father and uncles, what the doorman would do, they shut the door and put the bar across. They wouldn't challenge it. They wouldn't answer and say, look, oh, I'm a fucking one, I've done you some, why do you want some? They put the bar across. That's how hard they walk. And that's why they give Raquel's a bad name. Now, when the rave sees, uh, raves come out and the pills, it's a different kettle of fish. Everyone was friendly. You could bump into someone and say, all right, man, I do apologise. I've never really seen. I see one fight once at uh, a Kings Club, and a lot of people were well out of the red. And it kicked off there with a doorman. It was like watching something for fucking Western. I don't remember me because I was on pills laughing my head off. Well, it was just, it was just, 
there were kids fighting doormen that have probably never had a fight in their life. Because the doormen spoil the atmosphere. That's what I'm trying to get at. So when Bernard come, there was a head doorman there, they would get a lot of aggravation from the locals. So the head doorman said, no, I'm having nothing, I'm going. So Big Bernard said to the owners there, I'll take over, I'll be head doorman. So I'm, I'm getting out. So Bernard's head doorman there. Okay, he'd done his job. What went in, what went out, he had control of that. That's the doorman of it. You with me? No one liked him. Even his, I think one doorman probably liked him. Now I've got a doorman now texting me now that used to work the door with Bernard. Okay, now I have to take his word for it that he worked there and he's been telling me things and telling me things. And I do what I say to him, well, put it out on, on, on Facebook yourself. You know what I mean? Tell Bernard that he's a cunt and he done this and that. And I don't know, he, he might do. He's like a, a young lass that works in there. You know, she wants to speak the truth and Bernard's sending her fucking threatening letters. That's how big Bernard is. And I will do everything in my power and support to get her to speak the truth about our Bernie. I mean, what it was really like. So what I'm getting at now. So Bernard's taken over the door. Craig's selling now. But Bernard's friend's selling now. All right. Now, I don't know if Bernard had any involvement in what was going on, but it was Bernard's friend, Mark Murray, was in there. Now, we've seen that because Bernard's shown photos of him together. You and me, we've been around Mark Murray's for that. We've seen all that lot. So Craig wanted the whole lot. So Craig and Tony got their friends as you go, their story goes along. So Tony went down to Rax and said to Bernard, listen mate, my lads are selling in here. Yours ain't, or people you know ain't selling here, mine are. Bernard, yeah, no problem mate. Yeah, okay mate, yeah, no problem mate. So what I'm getting at, Tony never had Raquel's club. He never had Dorman on the club. And he never ever paid Bernard his wages or any of the dorm wages. That's what I'm getting. Tony was there, the bills and the money and the amount of people that got in there. Same as time, he never had Dorman on Time Nightclub. He never had Dorman on King's Nightclub. So all it was, Tony said to the Dorman, look, I'm taking fucking control here. I'm putting my lads in selling the pills. You want aggravation? I'll give it to you. And the doorman said, no, no, mate. No, we don't aggravation. Yeah, sell. So that was how it worked. So Bernard, all this crap, that Tony paid your wages. He didn't, did he? Now, come on, be truthful. He didn't, because a bit of paperwork's come out now. You actually did pay your wages. All right? So it's all coming out now. The club, the owner. They paid your wages to you, Bernard. Not Tony. You've never been around Tony's bungalow. His girlfriend's told me that, Bernard. So stop lying. Because it's like Yummy, Yummy B said, and it, it's true. You're saying one thing, then a week later you're saying something else. And you're contradicting yourself all the time. It's like when you mentioned Kenneth Noy. And, and uh, you took Pat to meet with the pun and Kenneth coming. And then you turned around and said, I'm sorry, I lied about it. You know what I mean? It's like you say, well, Tony and Craig took Whitaker's life. Tony didn't take Whitaker's life, mate. Tony didn't know anything about it until Craig told him the next day. And all this about, they were going down to, the, the plane was going to come and they're going to watch it and they're going to rob it. And it's like, a load of rubbish. What it was, end of the day. Now, I wore all around most of 95 and I'm putting my hands up with this. I could have said I would, I could have lied. I could have lied and said I fucking knew Pat Tate. But I didn't. I have no intention of giving that crap out. But this is what I've been told from people that offended me. And, you know, and I'm grateful for it. Remember, I used to go record with Bernard. And I used to deal with him. And I used to see Mark in there. And Mark was not working for Tony at first. All right? So we know that's right. And, and Tony never paid your wages on the cliff. So when the young lass died, okay, she lost her life. All right. It's a shame, and like we say, we can't turn back the clock. But there's no proof those pills come from Tony, was there? 
no proof that Mark give them. All right, lad, lad, lad was a pet when I was saying, didn't say, well, I got them off Mark, Mark Murray, did he? He denied having them. It's only because you set him up with the papers to, to, to get him in court and be a witness to it, but it didn't work, did it, Bernard? Because you've been a court so many times and all you do is lie. And every time you've been done contempt to court for, for lying, you know what I mean? But the, still the point is, you didn't know Tony very well. I don't, I think you probably met Pat once, all this about, you know, Epping Country Club, Epping Fuck Off, you didn't go there, you didn't meet them, and the craze got you the job. That's another dreamer, isn't it? You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's, it's Reggie, I just phoned in from my cell. I'm phoning the owner of Records Nightclub. I'm just sending a lad over called Bernie King or Bernie Malone. I'm not sure who he is, but I want you to make him head doorman because I really am good friends with Bernard. So can you do that for me, please? And uh, when you've done it, give me a ring back. I'm very grateful, Reggie Craig. Thank you. Dear, oh dear me. Anyway, the truth's come. One more thing. Who's in my kitchen tonight? Have a look around who's sitting about listening to me. Yes, you can see him on the brickwork over there. So he's always around. So we can have a little chat later. So Bernard never got paid by Tony. Tony just told Bernard and his silly little dormant, we're putting our lads in the deal. When it come on top of the young lass, some doorman, we know who, when talking. The lads wanted to get hold of him and give him a good slap and a word so that someone went missing. All right, we know that, we know the story now. Anyway, I'm not worried about that now. But it's gradually burning. You're being reeled in for your lies, bit by bit by bit. Now you're saying that you give up on the Essex boys. Have you give up on the Essex boys? Because I've come on, eh? And the truth's coming out and I'm contradicting everything you fucking say. Or are you just had enough? Or is someone told you to back down? I don't know. Well, only you know. You'll find out yourself one day. Anyway, at least people won't be getting threatened anymore, will they? So we'll leave that. Anyway, we're going to the cars. People, someone asked me a question about the cars. Now, before we got the banker's drafts, now, we used to get cars and we used to take them over to Kent. All right, I can't say where they went. I mean, they went always went to Kent and it was replayed from, a, from uh, the same car was crashed and they was resent them sent off sent abroad I think most of the time they went so we never ever stole a vehicle of a working person so if there's a say for instance a BMW outside someone's house we didn't go nicking it we used to go to uh, the four calls. Mainly, mainly me. So we went to a four court in Rayleigh, just off the roundabout one day. I think it was, now, yeah, no, you're wrong, it might be a Mazda or Toyota. I cannot remember. Is it the same company? I don't know. I don't think it is. Anyway, so I go in there. I look at the car. The bloke comes out. What car are you looking at, mate? I've got this one over here. So we go and get the keys. You start it up. You sit in it. You rev it. Look around. You walk back in. Tell you to get some more information. And he puts the key, the keys go into a box on a wall in an office and they're all tagged. So you see the key go on. So that night you come back, you smash the window straight away, run in, rip the box, take the key, take the car. Now, now they have bollards up so you can't nick the cars. But going back years ago, they never used to have bollards up, did they? They were just on the forecourt, you could just fucking drive them off the green. But that's how we used to nick our cars. And one night in Rayleigh, me and Craig were there, and it was a Toyota. No, MR2, I think. <clears throat> MR2, which I think is Toyota, isn't it? MR2. So I run into the office showroom. I smash the window. I know where the, 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 the box is. I run in there, push home, open the box. There's the key. I grab the key, went outside. Got the car, got it. Craig said, I'll drive this. He said, look, go and get me another one. You fucking sure? Get some one quick. The alarm's going off. The police be here soon. So I run back in to look for another one. That fucker's shot off in that one and he left me. I can't find that one. So 
the police are turning up so I fucking run on because it's not far from where the shops are and house and so I run and I hid in a, a front garden of a bungalow so that's that one car that little fucker drove off and left me and I had to walk the way back from Rayleigh to Pitsy yes so, so we got our cars we used to go to any four courts look at them find out where the keys are kept because you know when you sit there and look at the table and then so I just get the key, mate, and walk up, you see him, get the key out of the box. You just go back at night time, put the window through and take the car. That's easy as that. We never, ever stole off any person that works. All we ripped off was insurance companies, that sort of thing. And I'll tell you another story. When I come out of uh, Ballstorm, and I got my own place in Basildon for the probation officer, like I told you about, she got me a job, a job with Mark Randall. I bought Craig's first push bike for him. It was a chopper. I bought it. It wasn't new. It was second hand. I couldn't afford a new. Just starting off. And I bought him a chopper motor. Chopper push bike. Three gears. And we used to get a fare. Uh, come to Basildon. It used to be the back of the swimming pool. In Basildon. Now people know that. It used to be a massive fare. Well Craig and his mates. Cycle down to the fair to see if they can get any jobs helping put things up together because they used to have local lads help put the fair up and a few quid they used to give them a stall in that like some of the rides just being a joey. So he went down to the fair to help put up, and about five hours later, he come home crying. So he come round and see me, was crying. What's up? Those fucking gypsy kids have took my bike and they've hit took his bike and hit him. So I said, okay, well, I said, I'm not a fighter. So I said, okay, come down and show me where, where it is, who took it, and I'll have a word of them. So I went down to the fair. We had a walk around the caravans. We found the bike, I knocked on the caravan, and I said to the chap, look, this is my son, me, my brother's bike. And the bloke said to me, do yourself a favour, fuck off, or we knock you out. So we started walking off. It's gospel truth, we started walking off. And there was an old lady sitting on a stool, Peeling potatoes. She must have been 70, sitting there peeling potatoes into her big, huge silver bin full of water. As a woman, off, she said, she come out of her voice, what's up, are you still looking for work? And I said, no, I said, we'd come up here to get my brother's bites and some lads pinched it, some fair blows. I said, I don't think they meant to the pinch. I, I was polite. You know what she'd done? She put the potato in the bucket, put the knife on the side, dropped her own apron, Walked over the caravan, not in the caravan, went in the caravan, within 10 minutes she come out with the push bike and gave back to us. And that's how kind some people are. And that's how he got his push bike needs. I know it's not a great story, but there's little things like that. We, were, we used to go fishing a lot, competitions, me and Craig, as you've seen in one of the photos. Now, we're in Basildon, they've got a big, I can't remember what it's called now, big hotel, and they've got two big fishing lakes. Now, on the lakes, they have a golf golf range. You used to have jet skis going, stand up jet skis, but they have a golf range on it, and they have a lot of fishing content. So one day was in a competition. We got our peg. We sat down. Craig was about four pegs down for me, which we weren't the best at fishing, but Craig loved fishing, so he's fishing his competition. Can't remember what the prize was. Next minute, Craig's got in the water. Only up to about just below his waist, he's got in the water. So people look him, think he must have dropped something, still fishing. I was looking. What it was, there was a big carp, apparently, that a golf board have hit the carp, and it's, it's sort of dead. I think mean, it's dead or just probably dead. So he's gone in, got this fish, and put it in his keep net. <laughs> think, no one knows he's fucking anything, and pretend he could win the competition. So that's another story. So anyway, I'm going to have to go. It's worth some money. But that's... That's the money thing. I'm trying to get you burnt. Not get you and wind you up. Excuse me. I'm asking you burn it. And you COVID. I know they left you for a while now. And you've kept quiet. Because you haven't got the balls to answer me. That's fair enough. Just tell the fucking truth. Lying don't get you anywhere. You know, to be a liar, a good liar, you've got to remember what you say. So just come out. Is Yeah, I met Tony. Yeah, he came in my nightclub once, yeah. They seemed all right. I didn't like him, I did like him. So you got to say, you ain't got to pretend you were fucking friends of them, maybe your buddies. 
and your partner. You've done this because none of the family wanted to know if they died. They're they still suffering, all right? And you've made money out, out of the, the debt. And people are going to say, well, you're doing the same, Brian. I'm putting a story about my brother. All right? And I have written a book. And the book is doing well. And I'm hoping to get these, these uh, little shows off. Yeah. And, and talk about it. But the money for that pays for the expenses. You with me? Bit of security. Hotel. The, 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 the room you rent. You know, that sort of thing. The venue. But if I was making the money that they made. Now yeah, Colton's going on. The family should get some. But nothing was offered to him the family, was it, Colton? And you wouldn't dip your hand in your pocket. Nor would Bernard. So you're both the same. You're no different from each other. You're both hypocrites. You're both liars. And you're both two-faced. Because if these lads were around now, or one of them was around, you wouldn't be saying, fuck all the pair of you. Because if, if it was Craig around and he lost these two, he'd be after you. If Tony's around and the other two don't, Tony would or Pat would. You know they would. You know, Bernard, you were scared of Tony and Pat. And be honest, I think he's partly scared of Craig because he wasn't scared of you. And always about your friend, dormant friend, beat him up. Listen, we can all tell stories, mate. We can all tell stories about this and that and this and that. Craig wouldn't back down from anyone. Another thing I'm going to get at. When I went to see Craig on the 4th, late at night, it was about 9 o'clock, I went, S -s 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 -s. yeah, 4th, about 9 o'clock, and then on the 5th, early hours of the morning, about 1, 2 o'clock, I was outside talking, now Craig was nervous, yeah, he had something in his mind, he wouldn't say it wasn't his mind, as such, when we went to the Range Rover, and he pulled the gun out of the glove compartment, and had that, that sports bag, and the, the gear in it, now, I know Craig wouldn't be carrying a gun if he wasn't expecting any aggravation. Now, I'm not going to say that he told me he was going on the meet, because he didn't. I'm not going to tell me he was going to meet some plane, because he didn't. But I know me brother. Now, if he was going on the meet with the other two, and it's just a normal meet, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have been told up. But Craig was told up. And I know he was talked up, because I see it with my own eyes. And that gun wouldn't have got in that house with, with his little girl there. So where did that gun go that night? I know he was talked up, and he would have used it if he felt, if he was threatened. So well, let's find that gun, Mr. Policeman Plot. Never find it. Let's find his phone, Mr. Policeman Plot. We never find I bet your burner could find your gun. And he's fine. I bet he's kicked it next to that fucking blue cartridge. You know, from the shotgun that was lost. I don't know. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be the voice of the truth for my brother. And I'll keep fighting and fighting and fighting. And I am going to the police and the police complaints are going to see me. I'm going to put everything in. Because how can these police in Basin lie so much and get away with it after all these years? Yes, I went down to the Range Rover three six and half six. I see him dead. I phone my gaffer. Leave it. Don't say anything. It's always find them. Yeah, let's call the surveillance off just for the night when I was going down. Yeah, Craig at the police station. Oh, there's Craig in. Oh, he's disqualified. Let him go. Let him drive the fucking vehicle away. Tonight's his last night. He don't know that. Let him drive it. You know, there's so many questions to answer. And I'll keep pushing, and I'll keep. But the main thing is, with me pushing, and which I am doing all with all my heart and best, there's people coming on here that are telling me things. The doorman, a police officer, is, is, is in contact with me. He knew Jack Bowler. He's retired now, and he's he wants to talk a bit, but he don't want to talk message. He don't want to talk. He wants to meet me. And I'm in two minds. And I probably will meet him. If he comes my way, I'm going to have a chat. Let's see who it is. I'm not saying he's going to put his name to a fucking statement, but he might tell me something that I can put out here and the police are going to think, how the fuck did he know that? Who's told him that? So,
things are coming my way and working for me. See what it is? If you tell the truth, you get friends. If you lie, you get enemies. And Bernard and Colton, you've got quite a few of them. Colton ain't got many, only me, I think, at the minute. But Bernard, I think they're queuing up down the fucking street for you from Manchester, everywhere. Anyway, it's getting late. I'm off now. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.